Loud, crass, and witty, Douglas Bader was a true phenomenon in the air. With unparalleled flying prowess, he rapidly won over the initially skeptical 242 Squadron. Sir Alan Smith, a fellow World War II ace, summed it up, quote, You knew you were flying with an ace in every sense of the word. A bloke who knew exactly what he was doing, who was on the ball, was afraid of nothing, and was a great leader. Bader himself sometimes defied the Royal Air Force's strictest commands and strategies, showcasing audacious leadership. With an impressive victory count, he quickly became an iconic legend of World War II, and he did it all under extraordinary circumstances. After an aircraft crash claimed both of his legs, he had two prosthetics made and worked his way back to the skies. On December 14, 1931, Royal Air Force pilot Douglas Bader and two colleagues flew their Bristol Bulldogs to the Woodley Aerodrome. The men were assigned to the Royal Air Force's No. 23 Squadron. Air Force reports describe Bader as plucky, capable, and headstrong, with a knack for leadership and excellent flying capabilities. But he was also a daredevil, often flying his biplane with audacious flair, risking dangerous stunts that led to reprimands from his superiors. During the summer of 1931, he and a World War I veteran dazzled a crowd of 175,000 people at Hendon with their aerial acrobatics. The London Times hailed the display as, quote, the most thrilling spectacle ever seen in exhibition flying. Over coffee in the clubhouse of the Woodley Aerodrome, Bader's friend reminisced about his summertime aerobatic feats and dared him to replicate the maneuvers. Though reluctant, he took off, banked steeply, turning back, and started a low run across the airfield with his bulldog. Although these new biplanes boasted a top speed of 176 miles per hour, they were bulkier and not as agile. Their instability at low speeds was a known issue. As a precaution, low-altitude aerobatics were expressly prohibited below 2,000 feet. Once in the air, his bulldog quickly rolled to the right, and with his wings vertical, he started losing altitude. While Bader tried frantically to gain control, the left wingtip hit the grass, followed by the cowling and the propeller. The aircraft cartwheeled, finally settling on the ground, all with Bader still strapped inside the cockpit. The plane collapsed in a cloud of flying dirt. With the help of a hacksaw, the pilot was successfully pried from the crushed cockpit, and the young man was immediately whisked away in an ambulance. In the operating room, a leading surgeon made the difficult decision to amputate both legs, one above and one below the knee. Reflecting on the life-altering incident, Bader, whose pilot career had just abruptly ended even before it began, penned a brief entry in his logbook, quote, crashed slow rolling near ground. Bad show. After his accident, Douglas Bader, now fitted with a set of artificial legs, was determined to regain his previous abilities, most importantly flying. Through intense dedication, Bader was soon maneuvering a modified car, engaging in games of golf and cricket, and even dancing. But his heart still longed for a return to his true home, the Royal Air Force. By the summer of 1932, he showcased his undiminished flying skills by solo piloting an Avro 504. But even this accomplishment, coupled with a medical assessment declaring him fit, wasn't enough. In 1933, the news reached him that the RAF had decided not to take him back. Yet, as European tensions mounted, Bader saw an opportunity. Year after year, he persistently lobbied the Air Ministry for a refresher flying course, aiming to be battle-ready. Finally, on October 14, 1939, only a month after the outbreak of World War II, a telegram summoned Bader to the Central Flying School. After leaving town the next day, Bader regained a medical categorization for operational flying and began a refresher course on modern aircraft types. In late November, eight years after his accident, Bader flew solo aboard a Royal Air Force Avro Tudor. Once airborne, the forever daredevil could not resist the temptation and turned the biplane upside down at 600 feet inside the circuit area, with his eyes focused on the skies and feeling the vibration of the metal against the air, Bader knew he was home. In January 1940, Bader joined the number 19 squadron. Approaching 30, he was notably older than most of his fellow pilots. His squadron leader was Jeffrey Stevenson, a longtime friend from his early days in the Air Force. For several months, Bader honed his skills in formation flying, 
learned new air tactics, and participated in patrols over naval convoys at sea. Although he favored using the sun and altitude to ambush adversaries, official protocols mandated pilots to fly line astern and attack individually. Despite being at odds with the branch regarding his preferred tactics, he was determined to obey orders for now. His prowess and leadership swiftly earned him a promotion to flight commander of number 222 squadron. As Germany invaded Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Belgium, and France on May 10, 1940, RAF squadrons were dispatched to ensure air dominance to help the Royal Navy during the Dunkirk evacuation. It was here that Douglas Bader first tasted combat. On June 1, 1940, while coasting near Dunkirk at roughly 3,000 feet, he stumbled upon a Messerschmitt Bf 109. Mirroring his flight path and speed, the German aircraft seemed unaware. Taking advantage of the Germans' inaction, Bader, after several bursts of gunfire, secured his first aerial victory of the war. That very day, Bader recorded a Messerschmitt Bf 110 as damaged. On June 4, 1940, during the last patrol over Dunkirk, he faced off against a Dornier DO-17 targeting Allied vessels. After his triumphs at Dunkirk, Douglas Bader took command of the 242 Squadron. This Hawker Hurricane Squadron, predominantly Canadian, had endured significant losses during the Battle of France. With morale plummeting, they desperately needed a guiding hand. Though initially skeptical of Bader, the squadron soon grew to respect his unmatched skill, tenacity, and commitment. Under Bader's proactive leadership and astute strategies, the unit became a formidable force just as the Battle of Britain was about to unfold. Launching on July 10, 1940, the Battle of Britain saw Bader immediately making his mark. Just a day in, he registered his first victory with his new squadron. On the 30th, the 242 squadron claimed 10 enemy aircraft, with Bader personally taking down two BF-110s. Bader credited his victory to the Big Wing Theory. This strategy grouped large numbers of fighter aircraft to tackle enemy bombers. The idea was that bigger groups would better disrupt and shoot down enemy planes. Advocates like Bader and his superior, Air Vice Marshal Trafford Lee Mallory, believed it was key to defending Britain from a potential invasion. Despite the controversy, as the battle progressed, Bader found himself at the head of the Duxford Wing, a composite wing of fighters that employed this technique, much to the chagrin of more traditional Air Force commanders. September 15, 1941, was a day of endless air combat. Bader, at the helm of the Duxford Wing, which now comprised three Hurricane and two Spitfire squadrons, led a daring assault against the enemy using the Big Wing technique. The skies over London became a chaotic battleground. Dogfights erupted, leaving vapor trails across the sky, and downed planes from both sides crashed to the ground. By the end of that brutal afternoon, the Luftwaffe had lost more than 60 planes. Their dreams of invading Britain were now more distant than ever. Although only a few people realized it at the time, that day the Battle of Britain was decided. Only two days later, Hitler postponed the invasion indefinitely. The Luftwaffe had suffered a blow to its morale, from which they never recovered. The RAF, bolstered by Bader's leadership and the aggressive tactics of the Big Wing and many other squadrons unrelated to him, had delivered a crushing blow. Between September 7th and 27th, Bader's Duxford Wing tallied an impressive 135 German planes destroyed over 15 sorties. Bader was adorned with a distinguished flying cross for his valiant efforts on December 12, 1940, with the revamped 242 squadron boasting 62 aerial victories. Yet, even with Bader's evident successes, many in the fighter command remained skeptical about the Big Wing approach, particularly given the chaotic nature of the combat on those pivotal days. After the Battle of Britain, Bader never had a chance to use the Big Wing defensively again. By then, the war effort had mutated from a defense to an offense, and Bader was ready for his next challenge. In March 1941, Bader was appointed wing leader at Tangmere in West Sussex. During the summer, Bader was tasked with leading his wing of Spitfire fighters on sweeps and circus operations over Nazi-occupied territories. 
In these missions, the branch would send bombers, escorted by numerous fighters, to attack targets in continental Europe during the daytime. The goal of these operations was twofold, to lure the German aircraft into a fight and to provide combat experience for inexperienced pilots. Though headstrong, Bader had a cheery, irreverent relationship with his pilots. Bader eased his pilots' tensions in the air over France by cracking jokes and establishing the Tang Mir Wing's motto as return tickets only. As a wing leader, Bader had permission to have his initials marked on his fighter, and the DB moniker painted on the side of Bader's Spitfire gave rise to his radio call sign, Dog's Body. Douglas Bader's seeming indestructibility became legendary. Some believed his success as a fighter pilot was partly because of his disabilities. Because pilots pulling high G-forces during combat often passed out as the blood flow from the brain drained to the lower parts of the body, Bader could remain conscious longer and had an advantage over opponents with legs. Between March and early August 1941, Bader flew 62 fighter sweeps over France. By then, Bader had claimed 22 German planes shot down, the fifth highest total in the RAF, with four shared victories, six probable, one shared probable, and 11 enemy aircraft damaged. On August 9, 1941, he flew a Spitfire on a solo offensive patrol over the French coast, looking for enemy aircraft. Bader defied rules and flew with faulty equipment. Inevitably, Bader drew the attention of a squadron of BF-109s. In an ensuing dogfight with the German aircraft, his Spitfire was hit. Spiraling towards the ground, Bader attempted to eject, only to find that one of his artificial legs had become trapped in the cockpit, similar to his accident more than ten years before. Almost at the last minute, Bader parachuted safely. However, in occupied France, the legendary ace could not evade capture. Upon encountering the legendary legless ace, three German soldiers carried him to the nearest hospital. Recognized for his achievements, Bader was treated with respect by the Germans. After his recovery, Colonel Galland, who had flown in the very missions Bader was meant to intercept, invited him to the airfield and even allowed the American to see inside the German's BF-109, which he humorously requested to fly, but was denied with a laugh. After learning of Bader's damaged leg, the Luftwaffe, with Hermann Göring's approval, informed the British and offered safe passage for a replacement. A new leg was dropped off by mid-August, arriving with stump socks, powder, tobacco, and chocolate. It was the only time the Germans had authorized a British plane to fly over occupied territory. Determined, Bader then made multiple escape attempts. His audacity led to his legs being confiscated every night. As a result, the now enraged Germans sent him to Kolditz Castle, a high security POW camp. By April 16, 1945, when US troops liberated the castle, Bader had been captive for nearly four years. Once back in Britain, the ace pilot Douglas Bader was given the honor of a lifetime. On September 15, 1945, marking the fifth anniversary of the Battle of Britain, Bader, with a blue polka dot scarf around his neck, once again climbed into the cockpit of his dog's body marked Spitfire and led 300 Royal Air Force aircraft in a resounding victory flyby over London. Bader's illustrious wartime service earned him the Distinguished Service Order with a bar, a distinguished flying cross with a bar, and the title of commander of the British Empire. Additionally, he was made a fellow of the Royal Aeronautical Society. After he retired from the Air Force in July 1946, Bader continued his passion for flying. By the time he was grounded in 1980, he had accumulated 5,744 hours in the air. He passed away two years later. Outside his military exploits, Bader dedicated considerable effort to supporting fellow amputees and wounded veterans, efforts for which he was knighted. In 2001, a statue honoring him was unveiled near Tangmere Air Force Field. During this event, the Duke of Richmond stated, quote, he was defiant, single-minded, and fought for the things in which he believed. Douglas Bader was a very British hero.